going to split the eastern sky and receive his bride. And if you ain't ready, you're going to be left here alone. Amen. You don't need to go through that. You don't have to go through that. Many of us are like the Israelites. that cannot discern what God is doing in this day and age. Jesus was about to go to the cross. He was about to go and be persecuted. His beard was about to be ripped off of his face. His hands were about to be pierced. His legs were about to pierce, be pierced. He was about to be persecuted, laughed at, mocked at, spit upon. He was going to have he had a bunch of people. He was going to have a bunch of people just mock him and tear his clothes. He was going to be ridiculed and ashamed. Of, uh, and all because of you. All because of me. All because of our sin. And I'm here to tell you that he was going to do that. And the Israelites, instead of saying glory to be God, God is going to die for our sins. Instead of that, they just was looking for a king and not a land for the slaughter. I'm here to tell you they couldn't discern what was going to happen. And we are living in a day, un a day an age unlike we have ever seen. Since 1948, Israel has become a nation. Israel has became, came back into the, uh, to the nation of Israel and as God has promised. And many of us, it should be the most exciting time in our life. Because many years ago, many pastors would say that Israel is going to come back again to, to the land of Israel, the promised land. And every day sayer and, and scoffer would say, oh yeah, that's a, that's, that, 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 that can't happen. That's not, that, it, it's unrealistic. There's no way that that can happen. My dear friends, where there's a will, there's God. Amen. And God shut the mouth of the scoffer and the naysayer in 1948. And he caused the, 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 the ones that would say it differently, he caused the mouth to be shut because God Almighty was the one that was saying, this is my, this is my beloved people. I'm going to do what I said. I'm going, I'm, going, I'm going to give them the land that I promised them. And I'm here to tell you that in 1948 Israel became a nation. And Jesus said in his word that he, uh, that he would return within the generation that would see the return of Israel. He said, not one of these, not, uh, not, uh, the, uh, that this generation will not pass away before all things will be fulfilled. What that means is that we have a generation from the time of Israel coming in to all the way up to now. I'm here to tell you that we are, we are embarking on the 70th anniversary of the rebirth of this nation. The nation of Israel. What I'm trying to get across to you is simply this. Two things. First and foremost, we don't have too much longer to wait. We as Christians are about to go home. Secondly, is that Jesus Christ is about to come. And we're about to, we're about to go see uh, our heavenly kingdom. And those who are not saved will, be stay, will stay here through what is called the seven, year, the seven years of tribulation. A time of Jacob's trouble. I'm here to tell you if you're not sure whether or not you're going to heaven or hell, you better get sure real quick because I don't know how long we got we got left to let, uh, to waste. It may be very, it may very well be as I'm preaching to you right now that God is going to return and receive His bride. And I don't know about you, but I know for certain this old preacher is going to be gone. Amen. Amen. I already know where I'm going. I've already got that established. And if you're uncertain, if there's a doubt in your mind, you better make sure that you, uh, you know where exactly you're going. Because if you're not sure, there's coming a day where you're going to, you're going to regret not ever making a decision for Christ. You may be here and you may be having, go, having going through trial after trial. You may be going through some difficult times in your life. And what you're focusing on, just like Peter as he walked on the waves... You're not focusing on Jesus. You're not focusing on Christ. You're focusing on the waves and the wind. What you're focusing on is the problem and not the solution. You're blinded to the fact because the devil is trying to put those trials and tribulations in your mind so that you can see all these things, so that you can get discouraged, distracted, and dismayed. What, what Jesus is trying to do is try to teach you something. But as long as you're focusing on the wind and the waves, you're never focusing on God. God has to keep on teaching you over the same problem. You need your eyes open to see what God is doing in your life. Perhaps what is God, God is trying to do is open your eyes to re the reality that the only thing you need is Him. Maybe you're going through some problems and difficulties because you're as lost as a ball in high weeds. And you think you're alright because you got a good dose of religion one day because you said a little prayer but you didn't mean it. Or maybe you said a prayer and you, you were using it just kind of, well I've tried everything else, might as well pray and do that thing. 
But I'm here to tell you that God must come in your heart first. He must convict you of your sins. And He must present you that gift. You can't get it on your own. That's why whenever you come out of this, this church, God's been convicting you of your sin. He's been convicting you of, of, of what your greatest need is. And you say, well, another time, another place, another hour, I'm going to go outside this church. What you've just done is grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. If God don't bring it to you, you ain't getting it. Amen. That may be a little shocker for some of y'all. Romans chapter... Chapter 1 will tell you that you can grieve the Holy Spirit to, to the point where you're, you become a dirty, old, nasty reprobate. And there ain't no hope for that. You can say, God, you can say no to God only so long. I don't know where I was going with that, but someone needed it. Jesus wept for their blindness. Jesus wept to, for uh, Jesus. Jesus may be weeping for you to start see, seeing Him rather than the problems. To start seeing the reality that what you need is not another fix. What you need is not another alcoholic drink. What you need is not some, uh, some, some religion. What you need is a relationship with Him. He wept for their blindness. Secondly, He wept for their banishment. Jesus was also wept for, uh, because He knew the future judgment that was going to come upon the nation of Israel. Because of their unbelieving heart, because they could not understand the, the, what, what they were in, the sin, the, the, they could not understand who Jesus was. Israel was scattered in, in, in 70 AD by General Titus, who destroyed the run of Israel and broke the, the temple apart, and, and, and not one stone was left upon it, as Jesus himself prophesied. Jesus was weeping over their judgment that was about to come. I'm here to tell you there's coming a day in which those who remain blinded to the fact of who Jesus is, there's coming a day that if, 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 uh, there's coming a day that if you continue on the path that you're in, where you're going, you're blinded by the truth, you're blinded by who Jesus is, you're blinded by everything else. You've never trusted in Jesus Christ. You've trusted in a religion, maybe. Maybe you've trusted in some kind of self-help book. Maybe you've trusted in some kind of experience, but you've never had an experience with God. And I'm here to tell you there's coming a day where the people that are blinded to the reality of who Jesus is will one day be judged. They will ta be taken away and cast in the pit of hell for all eternity. They will be taken away to a place of fire and brimstone where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. I'm here to tell you it's a place of gnashing and weeping. There's a place, a place of gnashing of teeth. It is a place that you don't want to go and you wouldn't want to see your worst enemy to go there. Revelation chapter 20, verse 13 through 15, gives us a little example of what's going to happen. It says in, in, in Revelation 20, verse 13 through 15, it says, And the sea gave, it up, gave up the dead which were in it, and, the de and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. I spoke to you last Sunday about the, etern the eternality of hell. It is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It is a place of fire and brimstone. A place no, of no hope, totally cast away from God. Separated for all eternity. No, no chance to get prayed out of there. I don't care what the Catholics say. I don't care what some other people say. There ain't no chance you're going to get prayed out of there. When you, get, when you deny Jesus Christ your entire life, there's no hope after you die. There's no hope when Jesus comes again and, you, and, and you're left here and because you deny Jesus over and over and over. I'm here to tell you if you die right now and, you're, and your loss is a ball in high weeds, there is no hope. No one's going to pray you out of hell. And I'm here to tell you there comes a judge. You're going to have to be judged by a holy and righteous God. Not someone that, that, that you're sitting beside. Not, you're not going to be judged by someone that you're sitting beside. You're going to be judged according to the law of God. Amen. And I'm here to tell you as Romans uh, 3.23 says. For all of sin to come short of the glory of God. We're all going to be guilty. If we do not have Jesus Christ as our propitiation. Our anointing. Our covering. For our sin. There's coming a day, there's coming a day where all these individuals that have denied Jesus over and over and, and they, they, they died in their sins and never accepted Jesus Christ, there's coming a day where they're going to have to be judged. 